Hey guys, imagine a game which releases and then after every release they have to walk back and or ban cards that were released, in particular the most powerful card. Now there has been a lot of discussion, um, just the amount, 50 cards printed in 2019 or 2020 and remind you 2020 is not over yet. I think Commander Legends comes out uh, sometime around Christmas time, have been banned. And that is pretty interesting. I think a lot of people don't realize how bad this is, but uh, because a lot of people are not, they're not paying for plate paper magic unless you are an idiot. Uh, maybe if you were an idiot, you were paying for the collector's edition the set edition and so on but most people play at mtg arena and when they ban something you just get a refund and i think that's fine but if you have paper magic there is no value in this in any of these products and because it's so chaotic um they sell you as much product as you can as you, you will be able to buy because you want the oko you want, you know, the Companions, you want the Euro, you want the ONAF. And you say, you know what, I'm going to buy some boxes, I'm going to open some boxes, I'm going to buy a case, and then they get banned. So 50 cards, Growth Spiral, hmm, Growth Spiral is Mana Acceleration, Wilderness Reclamation, also Mana Acceleration, Tefi, Khan, Narset, Ho Ark. Arkham Astrolab. I would argue that Urza should also be here because it got the Mox, the Mox, Moxen Band, which is crazy because that card has existed in modern forever. Ren in six. Arkham's Astrolab. Magic 2020. Mystic Forge. Field of the Dead. Veil vale of Summer. Goalless Tireless Pilgrim. Agent of Treachery. And Kines the Hidden Hand. Throne of the Eldraine, Oko, Once Upon a Time, Fires of Invention, Mystic Sanctuary, Caldum Familiar, Lucky Clover recently banned, and Escape to the Wild. Pharos, Underworld Breach, Euro Titan of Nature's Wrath, Ikoria, Draineth Magistrate, Ren Renoda, Joiner of Forces, Loris of the Dream Den, and I would argue that all the companions have been banned, and I see it here, Zerdo the Dawnwalker, Luti the Spell Chaser, Companion Power, and now Zendikar Rise, and we have Onaf. This is unacceptable, because there are people whose full-time job is to make sure that these cards are not ridiculously overpowered. And... I would argue, again, I don't have evidence of this, and right now this is just my opinion, and I, I just don't have evidence, but something has changed. As soon as Autumn Lily became the face of magic, something really, something has changed, and I think I know why. So I, I have some circumstantial, I don't have any direct evidence, but I have some circumstantial evidence, so you're going to have to kind of, you know, it's very, very kind of cringy evidence, but I'm just going to say it because... Since um, Autumn Lily has taken over, you have new people in research and development. You have a Lee Sharps. He only wants to hire non-males. Uh, he does not want to hire anyone who is a white cis male. And he's actually tweeted this before, which I think is discrimination. And I'm surprised that uh, he has not been sued or let go. Mero, you know, I mean, what can you say about Mero? He's, uh, he's Mero, doing Mero-like things. So you don't have anyone there um, that is reasonable or logical. You just have a lot of emotional people who are uh, social justice warriors. I mean, it's really interesting that you can follow them on Twitter because they're very vocal. I mean, the one great thing is they're very vocal on Twitter. But when you see something that's kind of not legit, take a screenshot of it and send it to me. Because you know it will be deleted within like 15 minutes. They really enjoy doing that. I mean, they love posting a spicy um tweet and then realizing oh i gotta delete it but you know because it doesn't make any sense um what was his name that one dude was it gavin or lee i mean uh, just so many of them 
um, he was saying that some dude got murdered when the guy only got shot. Now, he got shot a few times and was very, very sad. I don't want to take away from the sadness of that event and why that was a bad thing to have happened. But he definitely didn't get murdered. So he retweeted something and didn't even read the thing that he retweeted because it would have told him that, hey, this person's still living. And this person's still living today, I believe. So you have a bunch of social justice warriors. You have a, for whatever reason, they think that somehow this is going to help their brand. With I think it just hurts their brand. Now, again, I can't go into too much detail because then I'll get in trouble, but it doesn't really make any um, sense. Like, if someone made a mistake one time at your company and it was really a devastating mistake, we, what would we say? We would say, oh, well, you know what? Um, we'll give you another chance. But if someone makes a mistake again and again and again, so I'm looking at a graph of standard bands over time, and in 2000, it's around 10. Around 2006, 2005, it became around 20. And then in um, 2015, it was still around that 21 mark. And then since 2000, I think in 16, it has been going straight up exponentially, which is crazy. I think it is one of the things that you can look at Wizards of the Coast and you can blame them. You can blame the research and development team. You can blame uh, play design, uh, testing. You can blame Mero. You can blame Lee. You can blame all these people because this should not happen. Uh, the reason this should not happen should be pretty obvious to you. Um, you cannot sell a product then ban the primary card that people are trying to get. You, you, or I guess, I guess I will reverse it this way. You cannot sell a product, hype up the Okos, hype up the Ornaths, hype up a deck, and then as soon as you're done selling, because you want to sell the next product, right? I would still say that Oko would still be playable today and it would still be very dominant um, in any format. Uh, it doesn't really matter what they printed. Oko would have been Oko. And this truly is an epic disaster. Um, I don't really know uh, what's going on here. But during Meriden, we had the Artifact Lands, Skullclap, Ravenger, Aphro Vile, and Discipline of the Vault. That was a very bad time in Magic. Um, but that, then again, you know, that was Artifact. So they supposedly learned better. This is pretty crazy. Um, I don't really know how we got here. And here, here's a uh, post. We wanted more money, and we figured out we can sell more packs if you force players to chase new broken rares and mythics every set. That's pretty norm. More seriously, it looks like anyone who didn't think this was the new normal, including myself, will have to accept that this is how Wizard of the Coast wants to run their game from now on. I think that's correct. In the past, a giant ban announcement like this immediately after a set release would include some type of explanation or apology. The announcement has is not an apology. And it doesn't explain why the card was ever created in the beginning. Like, who created a card? You know how, like, we don't have ELO numbers anymore? We don't have DCI numbers to track where we won if we're good Magic players? And they're deleting information. We don't even know, like, who the set artist or the set designers are anymore um this is it because there's no one to blame there's no one to blame magic just isn't the same game anymore i'm not going to stick around to get whipped back and forth by the newest broken cards and their subsequent bans there are more fun games to play with designers who give a shit about their play and i agree with this you know i've been playing other games now i've been collecting funkos and pokemon cards i can tell you their communities are way better than ours because imagine like some do some little kid buying four onos for his deck and then it gets banned that just feels bad and that's actually going to happen it, it's actually happened and then they lied to us about the magic movie and the netflix thing doesn't seem like it's working out um I mean, jeez. I, I don't really understand um, 
why they are behaving this way other than maybe they're just so focused on social justice um, they're so focused on social justice that they need so ONAF lasted 17 days that's and but it was hyped as blank you know that you have youtubers selling this set like there's no tomorrow FOMOing the set like there's no tomorrow and then look at it I mean look at Pharaoh so look I mean go on David Adams right now you can buy a bunch of this collector's boxes that supposedly are a great investment what they're not it doesn't make any sense they're going to continue to ban the best card like how can you ban the best card in the set and say that this set is a good investment you literally ban the one card that has all the value in it obviously not including the box hoppers the yada yada reprints and so on